Hello and welcome to iGlobal, the great big Indian money show 2021. I'm Tony Patti, host and uh, producer. And in today's program, we're going to be talking about becoming the ultimate networker, how to make great business contacts. Have you ever stood in a room full of strangers and just melted at the prospect of having to speak to people you don't really know? Well, being a part of great networker is very often the key to business and career success. In this masterclass today, we share the topics and tricks to make you a confident networker and speaker, of course. So some of the points we're going to be looking at today in today's program is where do we begin to network? How do you network with quality networks rather than everyone and anyone? How do you build confidence to speak to someone or connect with them online? And uh, also, how has the network helped you to grow as a person and also as a business? And we're going to be sharing some tips and tricks to network better as well. So joining me on the program here today are a few very astute and knowledgeable people who are all experts in the field of their game as well. We have Zamir Desai, who's the founder and CEO of Recommend Asian Limited. Zamir accidentally started Recommend Asian as a Facebook user and a Facebook group on sharing information with 219 of our Asian female Facebook friends. And today it has over 47,000 members where members share advice, information and other topics and has become a place for women to really get in touch with the community whilst living in the multicultural diaspora and also being the first or second generation Asians and Indians in the UK. We also have Farid Huck, who is the founder and executive chairman of Early Stage Studio. Farid Huck is founder of Early Stage Studios, a creative studio and publisher with headquarters in London in the UK. The studio is guided by non-executive board member, Mr. Max Brooks, author and graphic novelist. Farid has 12 years of experience working across strategy and public services, having advised the NHS and worked on two occasions with Number 10 Downing Street while program director for the Council on Social Action, and then again as CEO and campaign director of Startup Britain. We also have Russell Bahar, who's the founder of Asian Jewish Business Network. Russell set up Spring Ad Consultancy in 2017 after working in the media world for 14 years with over 20 years in sales and events as he started building his business and helping other companies achieve their goals and targets in a similar field. And we also have Jonathan Metlis, who's the chairman of Axiom Stone Solicitors. Jonathan Metlis is the chairman of Axiom Stone. Jonathan, one of the city's best known and most distinguished lawyers, Jonathan is one of the city's best known and most distinguished lawyers and has had a long and successful legal career. He specializes in corporate finance with an emphasis on takeovers, acquisitions, finances, flotations and joint ventures with expertise in real estate, retail and leisure and technology industry sectors. Welcome all to today's panel and discussion and thank you very much indeed for joining us on the Great Big Indian Money Show. And we also have Shalini Kenkar, who's the CEO at E2 Exchange. Shalini founded E2 Exchange in 2011. Their mission was to help build and foster the future high impact entrepreneurs of the UK by providing one place under one umbrella organization where entrepreneurs come to grow their businesses by connecting with fellow entrepreneurs, sourcing investment, funding NEDs, and accessing world-class corporate services. E2E Investment, the fundraising arm of E2E, focuses on securing early stage capital for high growth businesses, which is why networking is so very important to businesses like that. Welcome all to the Great Big Indian Money Show here on iGlobal today. So becoming the ultimate networker, 
and how to make businesses and contacts and how to make yourself great and grow. Perhaps I could begin by asking, where do I begin to network? And Zamir Desai, founder and CEO of Recommendation Limited, perhaps you could lead us on this one. Where and how do I make my business grow through networking? So I started networking via Facebook. Um, so I have Facebook groups and one of them is called Professional Asian. We have 76,000 members now, uh, both uh, B2B and B2C. Uh, so, and the weird thing is, even though I'm in this kind of position of having like quite a big platform to network with, I'm actually quite an introvert. I'm very shy. When I first started going to network events, I, I didn't really know what to say. I didn't know how to present myself. I didn't really want to talk to anyone. And so you do have to kind of step out of your comfort zone a little bit. And the best thing to do is practice. Practice what you want to say. Practice things about your business that aren't boring. So for example, the benefits that you might provide somebody um, by the business that you do or the service that you provide or um, thinking about your why and why you do what you do and what your passion is and what your driver is. And when those things resonate with you yourself, they're quite easy to talk about because you get excited by what you're doing um, rather than just trying to be somebody or say something that you that you're not and that you expect other people to hear. So networking is there's loads if you go onto Eventbrite um, or onto social media there's lots of stuff that you can physically go to hopefully soon nearby you and of course there are networking communities such as Professional Asian on Facebook and I think for me it's just being like unequivocally you being really authentic really genuine and just talking about the great stuff that you love about your business. Russell Baha, you're the founder of Asian Jewish Business Network, and through your uh, many years of, of experience of working in this particular field and working in the media for many, many years, um, something interesting that's just been mentioned in the conversation just now is that you have to open up and practice and practice being yourself and uh, don't be so shy. Uh, we've just been told that um, our previous speaker was, was an introvert. Is it something you've experienced? And if you did, how did you overcome that? Um, me personally, no. Um, I, I think I like the sound of my voice, I think, too much. Um, I, I, look, I mean, for me, networking, I've always been a network. I've always yeah, been... yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. Um, <laughs> um, you know, I've, all, I've always been a networker. For me, you know, it's helped me in the days when I was in the media world, when I was um, commercial director at the Jewish News, um, but for me, I think the, the, the purpose of when you walk into a room, yes, there are a lot of people who are very nervous about, you know, walking into a room. They're, they're not sure about people. They, they don't know how to maybe start the conversation. I think that's always the hardest one, isn't it, really? It's like it's almost like going to a bar if you're single and going up to a boy or a girl or, you know, and, uh, you know asking their name or something. You, you don't really know how to or what the reaction of that person is going to be. Um, and I've seen it. You know, I've seen it when, when people walk over and it makes me cream sometimes when I think they're going to walk over, they're just going to go, uh, hi, my name is uh, John and here's my business card. It's like, <coughs> you know, learn from your mistakes. That's the best way to do it. Um, but everyone's in the same room. You know, the one thing that you have in common, and always think about this, when you, when you go into a network, whether it be online or, you know, in person, everyone is there for the same reason. Everyone is there to network, you know? Um, and I think what people are uncomfortable about the most that I hear from um, and I get a lot of people asking me the questions as well is when they're asking that person about what they do what's their experience what's their challenges what's their 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 um, you know their point of being here and so on what they want to achieve but when you ask somebody to tell, talk to you about what you do you can just go on for hours because everybody likes talking about what they do because it, they, they know it it runs off their tongue um, so I think, you know, you have to be, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process. We've got people, you know, we've just recently started um, the, the women's network called uh, Women Inspired. Um, and it's, an on, it's going to be just online platform. And, you know, there's a, one, one particular potential member has said that they're very, you know, they're not comfortable um, with talking to people. 
you know, and we'll help them if they need help, etc. But they, it's a balance. They, they will get used to it. They get used to it. As soon as they know that they can get connections, that's it. Shalini Kemkar, you are the CEO of E2 Exchange, and you founded E2 Exchange in 2011, and your mission was to help build and foster the future high-impact entrepreneurs of the UK by providing one place under one umbrella organization for these people. But in order to, to, to do that, surely there was a communication part of this, very much a networking part to bring people together to form this great formulation of E2 Exchange that, that you, you've set up. How did you go about doing that and how difficult was it for you? Um, Tony, thank you. It's a, it's a great question to ask me. And uh, the honest answer is it's not been an easy journey um, because um, there is a lot of different ways of bringing people together. So um, E2E it stands for Entrepreneur to Entrepreneur Exchange, and we call it E2E for short because it's a little bit easier. Uh, we've got about 23,000 members now, but it's been a sort of a nine year, nearly 10 year journey to, to get to that. So uh, I congratulate um, Samiha for the 40, 40 plus thousand members that you have in your network. I think one of the things that we're talking about is um, the difficulties in terms of meeting people and, uh, and growing relationships. And, I'm not a massive fan of the word networking, if I'm honest. I prefer the word building relationships because I, I think what what we, what in business, it's not really who you meet, it's the fun that happens thereafter. And one of the things that we encourage our younger entrepreneurs, that e is very much about scale up uh, companies, but those younger companies who have that, the individuals who have that difficulty in terms of meeting, um, what we encourage regularly is to do some research and to do your due diligence before taking the time to meet people. And uh, we've talked quite a bit about physical events. Obviously, we're under the COVID environment, and I've actually found that the last one year has been a, a, a very, very good time to meet new people because you can meet people from all across the world. Zoom has become and um, these online forums has mean that today I'm meeting people I've never met before. Um, and really it's going to be on whether I can keep the relationship with you all afterwards. Um, so I think the important thing is that there are different ways of doing it and we encourage people to use all of the different networks that are out there, including the tools such as LinkedIn, on Facebook, etc. because um, physical networking is just one way and we don't want to limit the number of people that we can meet and we encourage people to really understand and use your time our time is very very precious um, so I feel that picking the, th the right things and getting the right advice in terms of which events you go to and how you network uh, it's important to spend time to do that before you actually get started um, so there's the with with London, with the UK, there's a lot of choice out there. And um, again, somehow you mentioned Eventbrite. Eventbrite is a, a, a is a great um, platform on what what in where there's a lot of different things happening. And to pick the right things is very very important. So I would say it's do your due diligence, do the follow up, and pick very very carefully. Uh, and those sorts of things help you break that barrier. Um, and one other important part of it. I think is self-searching, is knowing um, what your pitch is and not really always just talking about yourself. It's more around understanding who you're talking to and understanding them. Uh, and with that, the relationship is built and everything else will follow. Um, but there's no secret source to this. It is, it is difficult. This is iGlobal. If you have just joined us, welcome to the Great Big Indian Money Show. I am Tony Patty, and uh, I'm joined by a panel, and uh, we are in discussion today about becoming the ultimate networker and how to make great business contacts. Shalini's message to us a few moments ago was all about uh, keeping dialogues open and doing due diligence. Um, Fareed, you are the founder and executive chairman of Early Stage Studio. And certainly being in that part of the world, early stage studios, a creative studio and publishing headquarters based in London, UK. In terms of networking, it's something that I'm sure you've had to do over the years and also learned a lot from it. What are some of the guidelines and tips that you can give us in terms of networking when it comes to networking your work and how we can maintain and keep the network alive and keep it going? 
Uh, sure. Thanks, Tony. First of all, thank you so much for having me on the show. Um, and uh, I, I think I just want to start by saying that, look, um, uh, networks today are very important. It doesn't matter whether they're virtual networks or real networks. They, they are, um, they're, they're worth uh, a, a lot uh, in terms of your time, your, you know, the, uh, they're, they're monetizable, but, but ultimately they provide something very, very important as well, which is a support system. And, and I think that uh, one, one thing that I want to mention is I, I was one of those guys who grew up in a, the, in the big world of corporate. Um, I, I, I first joined Arthur Anderson Consulting, Anderson Consulting, then joined, then came over to Accenture, went through the IPO with them, you know, 12 years there. Uh, it, it, was, it was a great experience. And, and that was a network. That was my first family, uh, so as to speak, first corporate family. And it was a massive network. Today, that company has, I think, over 430,000 uh, employees around the world, maybe even more now. And I remember uh, going out to India with them. And what a, what a treat that was. I was based in Mumbai. I was living there. It was one of the best times of my life. Um, and what was interesting was that, you know, I didn't really have much of a network there. And, and I had to build that from scratch. So I think one of the interesting uh, byproducts of living a lifestyle where you are moving countries ever so often is that you pick up lots of friends and acquaintances in different places. And, and what I would say to everybody is I really concur with Shalini. It's not about a network. The, the, it's really about the relationships and it's about the longevity of relationships because too many people try and uh, make relationships transactional. They look to get value very, very quickly from those relationships. Whereas I don't think that's really what it's about. I think building true networks is about hopefully having empathy for the people that are in your network. Reaching out, my grandfather used to say to me, as did my dad, that always reach out to people regardless of whether you need something from them or not. The worst are those people that only reach out to you when they need something because that it just feels so needy. And, and even, if they, even if you can empathize with the need, you just feel like this person only reaches out to me when they, are, when they need, some, need to extract that value. So, so one very simple thing that people can do is really you know, make it a habit to reach out to people when you don't need something from them, just to check up on them and say, how are your mom and dad doing? How is life? Uh, you know, how are your kids? Uh, you know, how's your health? And, and I think so much of that empathy is lost in all this nonsense uh, these days where, you know, you're so busy trying to chase the next buck. Well, the buck will come. But I think it's about being seen as somebody who's a, a empathetic relationship builder and somebody who's not a taker, but a giver. So I, I went through this program with my co-founder, Vishnu, it was called Tech, Tech Stars, and it's an accelerator. And, the, and their whole, the credo is give first. So, so I think that's very important. Jonathan Mitlis, uh, Chairman of Axiom Stone Solicitors, um, in today's discussion here on the Great Big Indian Money Show, we're talking about becoming the ultimate networker and how to make great business contacts. For you to have established a very success, success for you to establish a very successful law firm, prior to that, you established a very big firm before selling it on. Networking and establishing great business contacts must have been part and parcel of your daily routine. Tell us about that. It was, it was absolutely fundamental, and I had the um, privilege to be exposed to one of the great networkers of the legal world, who was the late Stanley Berwin, who was amazingly well-connected, um, who made an effort to mix in the, the um, most prestigious and Premier League circles, uh, and I learned so much from him in terms of uh, introducing myself at, I mean, we're talking about pre-technology age now, dinners, breakfasts, uh, charity events of all sorts. And as, as was mentioned earlier, talking to people, if it doesn't come naturally, it's not easy. Uh, and in a way, um, one of the, it, it came naturally to me, and it still does. A lot of things don't come naturally to me, but that certainly does. But I was sort of in fear of Mr. Berwin, and uh, he expected me uh, to approach people, talk to people, and most importantly, sell my product. If you haven't got a product, then talking to people is, is a complete waste of time because it's all quite uh, synthetic uh, and, and skin deep. So in terms of building up a business and the same 
applies with axiom stone now, it's making contact in the areas that you specialize in. And going into the technology age with Twitter, social media and the like, what we've managed to achieve over the last year at Axiom Stone is notwithstanding um, the inability to meet people and remote working, we've actually been amazingly successful in building up certain networks in certain areas, in particular in the real estate world, we, have, we hold a quarterly real estate lunch, uh, which where we don't provide food, as you can imagine. Um, and that invitation is sent not on LinkedIn or any what I call public networks, on our own network, some 750, 800 people. And on average, we have been getting an attendance of some 100, 100 to 120 non Axiom Stone people from all works of the real estate, all parts of the real estate world. And as somebody also said, the next step is the follow up, because without the follow up, it's a complete, it's a complete waste of time. So, um, you mentioned, uh, uh, you asked me a question earlier when it was a client actually who, who rang me. Um, the fear of approaching people or getting people to or getting people to open up. Um, it's important to know whom you're talking to and whom your target is. And likewise, as somebody mentioned, you, the due diligence that you do in advance is very, very important. Zamir Desai, founder and CEO of Recommendation Limited. Um, we've just learnt quite a lot from Jonathan, what he's just said. And uh, today you have a website through which uh, you enable modern Indians to access uh, the wealth of amazing goods and services uh, the community has to offer. The promoting small businesses, uh, holding networking events and creating opportunities for accessing amazing offerings from the culture that we're talking about is obviously part and parcel of your business. Jonathan mentioned bringing people together, sending out um, uh, a, a lunch meeting invitation. Is that very much on the same sort of lines as what your business operates? Um, I think networking on Facebook in communities, especially with the scale, is slightly different obviously can't have a lunch for 75,000 people would love to but not possible but what it does is it gives you the opportunity to kind of get to know people and to let people get to know you on a different level so it's not that immediate um, interaction of like spending an hour somewhere or two hours somewhere and having like a, a load of conversations it's more like uh, you have a, a window of opportunity to to let people get to know you and, and your products and your services. But what I do say to my members is remember that Facebook communities or, you know, large communities that are online, it, they are still a community. Like you wouldn't go to a, a live, like in-person network meeting and like hand out your card and then leave. Like you would want to interact with people you want to know about them as much as they want to know about you and like Farid said you know you want to help people as well so if somebody comes to my community looking for I don't know an accountant then maybe Russell might recommend an accountant even though he you know like you know he he might not be an accountant but he might know somebody um and uh and somebody else might recommend somebody that they use. So there's that process of giving. And then as you get to know each other and your um, profile, it kind of is a bit more active on a Facebook group, then people get to know you. And then when you talk about yourself, they're like, oh, you know, I remember that person, they recommended me something. Oh, I'd like to listen to what they, they have to say. And the way that you interact is, is kind of like a real community, but in a short time frame. Does that make sense? I'm loving the, the, the network aspect of this and, and follow up and accepting and uh, establishing dialogue. But when it comes to building confidence to speak to someone or connect with them, particularly online, which is 
uh, part and parcel of our daily routine lives these days. Everything is online. Um, Russell Baha, um, from your perspective, um, what can you offer us on that about building confidence to speak to someone or connect with them online? Because surely in the media and advertising business that you've been involved in, it's something you've had to do quite often, I'm sure. Yeah, no, I think we've we, uh, everything's changed, hasn't it? Really, let's let's face it. You know, in the last year, we've learned new technologies. We've we've learned to adapt to new things, new rules, um, new way of life. Um, you know, whereas you know, just to go back slightly, you know, last year, you know, I was meant to hold four live events last year, and we were unable to hold any. And I remember when we launched the members club in London, we we launched it. Um, in January of last year, following a very successful event that we had at Lord's Cricket Grounds at the end of 2019 with over 400 guests. And um, of which Axiom Stone were, were, were our headline sponsors um, and, to, and, and still today are our headline sponsors. Um, and my concern was, well, hang on a minute. So we're, we're going to be going from live events to all of a sudden now going to everything on, you know, to, uh, to online. Um, and it was a concern of mine. And whereas in, in March of last year, we were meant to hold a, a, our first members event. It was a concern of mine. What I didn't want to do was, you know, to stop. And I thought, well, look, at the moment, we can't go anywhere. So we're going we're to do everything online. And I think everybody adapted to it really easily because it was very new to people. And obviously, yes, people were a bit unsure about how to talk. And you get the, 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 the normal comment that you still get now, you're on mute, can't see you, can't hear you, all these things topics and everything else that's the fun part of it but I think we've adapted I think personally we have adapted to to zoom or to teams or however it is very very well and what we've realized um, and I can't remember apologies I can't remember who actually said this just a few moments ago that we are now meeting with everybody um, whereas had the pandemic not happened would we have met some of the most amazing people that we've met now, you know, a year ago. I don't think we would have, yeah? Would we be sitting in front and doing this now? I don't think we would have. Um, you know, we we had to build up a network, whereas at the start of March, we were at 23, 24 company members in London. As of today, we've got 74 company members, you know, uh, corporate sort of SME firms, members in London, you know, we've, we've, you know, we've launched an online women's platform. And I think people have adapted to it really, really well, because there is no, there's no, at the moment, there's no alternative. And people have to network. Some people probably find it a little bit easier, maybe doing it over, over Zoom, you know, let, you know, people, I've, I've met someone a few months ago who was in, in, in their pajamas, you know, but we did business. I mean, it's a bit, a bit unusual, but it was, it was, uh, that was them. I got to know them. I got to know them because of their pajamas. Do, you know, do you think, do you think, Russell, that talking to somebody online breaks down the barriers of confidence um, where people have confidence problems in speaking to a complete stranger, perhaps? Uh, yeah. Do you think, do you think uh, building that confidence to speak to someone the Internet has helped? I would say 100 percent. You know, I think 100 percent. I think people have become it's almost like picking up the phone. I know people who are amazing on a telephone but can't can't talk in public, you know, to people. Um, but I think this has really, really helped people because they've had no choice. You know, there, there, is, there is very, very little alternative. And they've had to use this sort of platform, whether it's internally for their business, with their teams, you know, um, whatever it is, I think it has. I think it's, they've learned to use it. Hopefully they can learn from this. And then when it comes to the face-to-face -face when we're allowed to, hopefully they can pick that up and take it to that place, hopefully. Freed Huck, um, how has the network helped you to grow your business um, and help you to grow as a person as well as a business? Thanks, Tony. Great question. Um, I, I think, first of all, uh, I, I believe that, you know, there's two kinds of networks, right? There are the networks that you plan to be a part of and then the networks that you accidentally fall into. So I'm a huge believer in the serendipity of networking as well, because when I go, let, let's just say, for example, you're going to a very large uh, event, some sort of big conference, you obviously go there with, you know, a, a list of a hit list, uh, and maybe some people don't, but so that's a tip for, you know, a pro tip for people that are going to conferences is prepare for that. Have your, at least your top three targets. I think it can get very overwhelming for people when they go to these big shows, because, you know, you go in there, you see these thousands of people and you're like oh my god that's a lot so 
where do I start? But those that are prepared and you're, you know, you're looking out for those key people, um, you know, you, you want to make sure that it's not creepy. You don't have to stalk them. You know, just uh, let, just make sure that you understand what their talk is, go after the talk and try and say hello. And, and I think, you know, I keep it to things as simple as that. And, and in exchange of a business card, perhaps, I know that's a bit old fashioned, but I'm a big fan of business cards. I think while we close a lot of our digital interfaces, the business cards stick around and, and remind you that these people were people that you've interacted with and collided with. So on that, uh, the point that I was trying to make was that the serendipity of meeting some people at those events is quite beautiful. And, and some of the best business relationships I have today are entirely based on that serendipity. And Shalini is one of them. I never planned to meet her. Uh, I just bumped into her. And, and uh, you know, many, many years down the road, we got a chance to do some business together. So I think that, you know, you, you get a chance to meet these people. And then the second part of it is somebody said follow up, right? I think it was Jonathan that, you know, you, you have some sort of uh, call or, or meeting and then you follow up. I think that's extremely important, but that follow up can also be, uh, you know, wishing them on their special occasions. It can be about wishing someone about uh, for Diwali. It can be wishing somebody a happy new year. It can be, you, I'm amazed at the number of people that don't do have those hygiene factors that just look at their calendar and go, oh, you know what? It's Rosh Hashanah, I should wish Yeni. Or hey, Diwali, I should wish Shalini. Or, or whatever it is, you know, I, I just think it's shocking to me that people don't understand what's important to other people. I, and, and yet, you know, uh, do I really care if I get a happy Easter card? Maybe not so much. Do, do, do I care about getting a card at the end of the year from somebody that I do business with just to see how things are going? I do a lot. So, so in summary, I think relationships are fundamental in, or to grow the business. Without that, you don't get the most important thing, which is referrals. I think in business, if you're doing good business, uh, I, I think the point is that if you're making products, uh, really great product marketing is making a great product. If you're doing services, really great service marketing is just having fantastic relationships and, and great networks. This is the iGlobal program, and this is the Great Big Indian Money Show. And we're talking to panel people today about networking and uh, growing uh, your business as well. Zamir Desai, um, how important when it comes to networking and getting to know people, how important is it to do your homework before you actually go perhaps on a networking meeting or when you're meeting somebody uh, or connecting with uh, someone online? How important is it to do your homework in the first place? It depends on your intention, I'd say. If you're looking for something like fundraising or something quite big or a partnership or something like that, I would obviously look at somebody's profile and LinkedIn and, and see if there are any similar connections that we might have or share. Um, if you're just going to um, just meet people generally, to be honest, I don't really prepare. I just like enjoy and go. And I think what uh, Farid said about serendipity is totally 100% true for me. A lot, I would say 90% of my best relationships are just because I've been in the same room at some, like with somebody at the same time and happened to me and that some of my most successful ventures have become just by chance. So I think if you go with the right mindset and the right attitude, then you can make a success of any event that you go to, definitely. Shalini Kemkar, um, you've uh, been working <laughs> with entrepreneurs and the business sector for a long time with uh, E2Exchange. And uh, as CEO of your company, um, what are the great success stories that you've seen through networking and uh, uh, becoming the ultimate networker and making your business contacts grow? Uh, thank you, Tony. Great question again. Um, I think uh, what's been the, the best part of running E2E is actually seeing the good that's come out of it. And a lot of it actually through serendipity, what um, um, Farid was talking about. I'll give you some examples. There was one gentleman, he came to an event, he wanted to find an investor. He'd done some research, but he hadn't. he didn't know everybody in the room. But through serendipity, he met somebody, he raised seven million that night from um, making the effort to come and probably not the most confident person. So, you know, one of the questions that you asked earlier, Tony, was around um, how to break the confidence. And I think um, um, Russell did say that um, these sorts of Zoom, Zoom type activities 
does help you. But a lot of it is actually about tenacity in my view as well. So um, one of the benefits that's come out of E2E, we run roughly 45 normally physical events in 11 different cities. Now it's become um, online events um, pretty much, but it's opened the audience. But through, through making an effort and doing the homework that we were talking about and then following up, there are a huge number of thousands of examples of where people have found a mentor, a non-exec director, they've raised money. Um, some people have actually found a way to exit and sell their companies uh, without having to use a corporate finance boutique. They've found people such as Fareed, um, who is an absolute global expert in, in marketing, and they're using his services. So, you know, that kind of thing does happen through, I think, a combination of serendipity and the combination of... Um, preparation and um, I like to mine's been like 10 years and I think uh, I've met some people who I would never have thought I would have met through just keep persisting keep persisting keep persisting and it happens after a long time I remember one person he's one of the most successful entrepreneurs in the UK he came to an event that we organized a couple of years ago and I said to him how did why did you come um, and he's on profit track um, very high on profit track why did you come? He goes, I had two choices. Either I could ask to unsubscribe or actually figure out what you guys do. And he's one of my closest friends now. Um, so it, it's amazing how through a bit of persistence, things can change. So a lot of good things do happen through getting out there and making that effort. But you have to make the effort. Jonathan Metless, uh, Chairman of Action Stone Solicitors, um, give us some of your top tips and tricks for networking and growing your business. Well, before I do that, um, for which I won't charge, um, I just wanted to comment, when we hold our property lunches, uh, I ensure that the whole team goes through the list of attendees in advance and we see who's attending, so we do our homework properly, so we know how to, what's the word, mould the audience, um, um, uh, present to the audience. So that's point one. Two, the gentleman on the beach, um, I traditionally, and I was taught by the late Stanley Berwin, so it was a Jewish New Year for trees the other week. And I actually sent out through my own pocket and didn't look for any reimbursement. Uh, Russell actually was a, was a, a beneficiary of the uh, generosity. Uh, I sent many trees uh, planted in Israel to connections and potential to clients, connections to potential clients. Thirdly, somebody mentioned mentor. And I was fortunate to have the late Stanley Berwin, my late father who ran uh, British Land, uh, John Richblatt, the chairman of British Land, and Stephen Rubin of Penston Group, with whom I'm still close, uh, as my mentors. And I saw them build up their businesses uh, and see them uh, network uh, and introduce people to one another. And the third point, which is uh, uh, supporting Russell, personally and axiom stone have had a very good lockdown so to give you an example and i know i'm not answering your question but to give you an example over the last 10 days i personally organized an event um united synagogue in the city with lord peter levine we had over 200 people on the on the um uh, on the event um a joint venture between axiom stone and city group in relation to robotics, where we had a, a leading scientist from the Technion in Israel. And third, would you believe it, I actually address an audience of over 250 young ladies, if I'm allowed to use that expression, uh, at St. Paul's Girls' School last Friday on the art of networking. So um, I, what, was the, what was the question? I apologise. Some top tips and tricks about networking. and Tops. Uh, well, I yeah. think the lady who spoke, I think persistence and tenacity are absolutely fundamental. You've got to keep going. You make the initial contact, you follow up, and you keep going. Two, nothing is ever wasted. Nothing is ever wasted. So you go to an event, 
uh, you exchange some cards, uh, you pick something up, um, you take a phone call subsequently, nothing is ever wasted. On the persistence level, no is not an answer. Not an answer. If you want Tony to be your client and you see that there's benefit, win-win to both sides, you keep at it. No is not an answer. Uh, and I think, which is a difficult one, is the expression, no fear. Unfortunately, I was born into a very entrepreneurial environment. And to coach people into no fear is very, very difficult. In fact, I would slightly take issue with Russell on this because I'm actually very fearful of technology. And I find that, as you, could, you saw before, and I find using technology more difficult than meeting people on a one-to-one -one basis or going to a room full of people. I'm far more comfortable uh, in, in the latter. So um, just do it is my last phrase. Just do it. Splendid. And, and finally, sorry, last tip, yeah. always go to the top. Cut out the middlemen, cut out the PAs, go straight to the top. If you want to speak to the prime minister, well, maybe you're better off going to his, uh, his lady companion, but go to the top. So those are some of my tips. Excellent. So somebody in my network gave me this book called The Go-Giver. I would definitely recommend reading this book. It will take you a couple of hours tops. And it's a really lovely little story. And thank you so much for giving that to me. And I would like to share it with you. So again, it's called The Go-Giver by Bob Berg and John David Mann. So definitely read that because it will put you in a different place. Um, and it will give you a bit more confidence too. Um, if you are an introverted person like me, then I would say just believe like in yourself, talk to people, talk to, talk to them about themselves and don't worry about being salesy or selling. Just think about who you are, how you're gonna connect with people and just have a, a banter and a relationship and don't forget the person that you're speaking to, it's not just them. Every person knows about 200, 250 other people. You're, what I say to my, my guys is that you want to be top of mind when they are looking to buy something or buy into something. You're not there to make a sale there and then. You're, make, you're there to build a relationship, but you want them to remember you for what you do. So those are my top tips. Russell Bahar, what are your three top tips on networking and uh, growing your business? Um, I don't know if I've got the first top three, but there's lots. I mean, you know, to go on what Jonathan said about before, yeah. you know, it is about, you know, not giving up. I mean, I, I, the one thing I don't like doing, I don't like the hard sell. Um, if I've got a product and, it's, and I know that it's a decent product, I want people to want it rather than me having to push it and to sell it. Um, and I think that makes life a lot easier. You know, when we when we came up with the concept of the, our network, you know, network is saturated. There's thousands of events that are going on. But what we wanted to do was to produce and create something niche to something which was saturated. And that's what we got. Um, and I think that's when when you've got and what I mean by that is that you need to be creative. If you give people a creative uh, uh, opportunity, then fantastic. Jonathan and I have known each other for over 15 years. And he was one of the first people that I actually went to to ask him about I've got this idea, I've got this concept, what do you think, you know? Um, and for me, it was a case of if, I, I'm very open to have conversations with anybody because I'm also a believer of, you never know what can come out of it. And I think this is what something that Farid said earlier that it might not be now, it might not be in six months, it could be in four years time, you know? Um, and a little bit like, we, again, Jonathan and I, I hadn't seen him for years and I bumped into him at an event. And I hadn't seen him and he was like, you know, take my car, this is my new details, let, let's catch up. And we did. And all of a sudden, from someone I hadn't seen for over five years, you know, created an opportunity. He gave me some great advice. He, he, he put me in touch with people like Axiom Stone um, and helped me grow the network as well with, with some of his amazing contacts. So I think to summarize, again, don't give up. Make opportunity and time for anybody and everybody and be creative have to be creative.
Shalini Kemka um, from E2E. Um, so your top tips on um, communicating, networking and growing your business. Thank you very much, Tony. So I think uh, um, it's very important, I would suggest, not to under, uh, undermine anyone um, and not to underestimate anybody. Um, giving rather than taking, go and see, treat it as a relationship, um, not as a, a networking thing, is how you can get to know that person, become friends with that person and be in it for the long term rather than the short term and good things happen as a result of that. Splendid. Farid Huck, um, could you give us your top tips on networking and growing your business? Sure. Uh, I think, uh, again, it's really, uh, I'll give, I'll do a few. One, just make sure you keep in touch with people. It's the long game. So it's not about next week, next month. It's about potentially sometimes years. And, and uh, number two, uh, I, I love what, I think it was Russell who was saying, uh, the hard sell, it's really quite distasteful. And, and I think sometimes it can push people into a corner and, and then that just implode, the relationship implodes. So don't do it. I, I think uh, just uh, have, a, have a radar for these things, develop one. And, and even if you, you know, sometimes some people don't get this. You and I may be talking to one person, you will take away something, a very different feeling than I will. I think it's just important to develop that radar. So that's an important one. And finally, don't underestimate the value that digital tools can provide in networking and keeping up to date with your network. I'm just gonna give a couple of examples. LinkedIn is the obvious one. Everybody's on LinkedIn, or so you think. There's a bunch of creative people that are not on LinkedIn. So there are entire networks of Broadway producers, artists, performers that just don't exist there. Or, or similarly, there are bespoke networks of people like uh, people in the fashion industry, which exist in on the business of fashion, but they don't exist in LinkedIn because they don't take it's cool to be there. So, so I think you have to you have to think about what, where your audience lives, and 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 I think engage with those channels. And the last technology example I'm going to give you, this has truly revolutionized my pandemic experience in networking. Is something called Lunch Club, and it's an AI driven. Um, a sort of networking tool where you know it understands you knows what kind of, the kind of people you want to meet and it keeps scheduling these meetings for you and i've had over 40 of them and met some incredible people so and and it's across the pond so it's not a it's not a local thing it's also about the us and other countries and i love expanding my network internationally so that's that's those are my top tips splendid fantastic and that's a wrap thank you all very much indeed mm -hmm.